So today we are going to continue from where we stopped and if you look at the screen we've actually come a long way I think by now we should be in part 29 So in this part we are now going to continue setting up other modules in this application I want you to kind of take a look at what I've uh, come out with the list of things that are left for us to be done For instance, we are going to be uh, talking about changing the background image we are going to be setting up other home cards. So what is home card? If you look at this place, this is home, uh, the home cards. You can see there are about seven cards here for the parameters module. But if I go to help desk, you see there are no cards there. If I go to HR home, there are no cards. So we actually set up, we've actually set up the cards for the parameters module. And what is the parameters module? Parameters are simply objects that should be available to other modules. So we are going to also be setting up uh, the home for other modules. Now I've added two additional modules, making the modules to become about seven. So if I look at the list of modules I have here, you can see there are about, I think, seven or eight modules that we have, we're going to be working with. So for now, we've set up the, the, the parameters home and that is fine. So, next we are going to be talking about CRUD for states. So, to add state data, we are going to be using something similar to adding country. Except that in case of state, we are going to have a drop-down where we are going to be selecting the country, uh, the country where the state belongs. And so, that's why I've included it here, explain loading a drop-down. And then we're also going to be doing CRUD on location. What is CRUD? CRUD is simply be able to create, insert, update, and delete a location object from the UI. So I'm going to create a form to enter location, but it's important to be able to know how to load a drop-down conditionally. So when you enter a location data, you want to be able to select the country and the state drop-down is going to filter based on the country you select. So sometimes I call it load select by select, but it's actually conditional filtering based on drop-down list select. So when you select the country, you should be able to filter data and get only the states for that country. Now, this is very important because in different parts of this application, we are going to be talking about conditionally selecting data. Why is it important? Because if you don't filter your data, it's going to impact on the performance of your application. If you load up all your data at the same time, then the performance of the application is going to uh, be slow. It's going to load very slowly if you have several thousands of records in your database. So you should be able to filter your data uh, conditionally. We're also going to be talking about parent-child form. So once you have Parent-child form simply means you want to display the child entities of a parent entity. An example will be when you display details of a country, you want to display a subform, which is a tabular form that displays states in that country. So in this case, you have details. Now, if I go to the application now, if I go to what we already have, if I go to parameters, you can see that we have countries here and we have the country details here uh, of course, we cannot edit. We have the country details here, but we want in this country details, we should have the states in that country displayed as a child form here. So we have this entry here, we have list of states for that country, and that is what I call parent-child form. We also need to do, I'll, I'll then give you a homework, because many of the th these things we are doing here is repetitive. So. I'll give you a homework to actually complete doing some CRUD operations yourself. And then in the next class, I'm going to see how you did it to see if you actually get it right and actually do it for you. So I'm going to give you homework to do CRUD operation for contacts. Then we are going to do CRUD operation for clients together. Why? Because the client model to enter data there, it requires a form that has two columns, right? Uh, the reason we may have two columns is when you have several fields, it's better to have two columns forms. In that way, it makes your UI uh, be user-friendly, okay? So I'll go, I'm going to do that with you. And then we have another two-column form called suppliers. So I'm going to allow you to do that as a homework. 
these homeworks are really very important because the more you do hands-on, you do it, I mean with your hands, do it yourself, the better, pro the better you become in, in programming. Then we are going to be talking about in-page crawls on module. Now this is very, it's super important to understand in-page crawls. Now I told you in part zero that we have three different methods for crawls. One of them is pop-up or pop-up model based crawl operation where you have to click add. When you click add, it displays a pop-up and you fill in the form that pops up as a pop-up and it saves the data into the table and updates your table. That is called modal based crawl. We also have multi-page crawl where when you click on new, it's going, to, it's going to take you to another page and uh, you now enter the data and it comes back to the list of the, the page that contains the list. So this is multi-page. Where the list is in another page, the add new is in another page, edit is in another page, and this is also good. But in-page crawl is very important because it eliminates JavaScript, uh, limits JavaScript, and also more or less makes your, uh, your, the code base you're going to be writing to become very small because you're going to be doing crawl operation in one single page without having to be doing a pop-up by using different uh, script file. Then we are going to be doing in part 39 form validation. Very important topic because if your form is not valid, people or users are going to enter erroneous data or bad data or even malicious data through the form onto the database. So form validation, we are going to be doing two aspects of form, form validation. We are going to be doing first native HTML form validation and then we are going to be also doing uh, script-based form, form validation using CSS. Then I have part 40, which is extremely very okay, very uh, important to know that's toast. Actually, it can be considered to be something optional. The reason is because these subscribers or these users that recommended that I do pop-up confirmation, which is Maurice Okoro and uh, S. Kuma, I don't know if it's Sanjay Kuma, but Maurice and Kuma, they say they need me to do um, confirmation. Uh, confirmation is not like confirm to delete, but confirmation that an operation has been performed. So normally what we do is when you click on delete, it's going to say, are you, are you ready? Are you sure you want to delete? And then you have to click yes or no, because you can't just delete something like that. But what they are talking about is, once something has been done, for instance, you've entered the data and that data saved to the database, they want a post, a message that flashes up and say, record successfully entered or record successfully saved and it displays for a few seconds and then disappears. So this is what they want me to do and I agree with them, although it's optional, but I'm going to do it for them. And we also have sorting of your data. So you want to click sort and it's sorted by date or by columns, names or by name or something. We are going to be doing that. We also have filtering of your data. What does it mean? So you have a table of data. You want to be able to filter it by entering something in the search box and then click a filter. It's going to display the data on, on the table or filter the data based on that search criteria you entered in a text box. Then one thing that have being a problem for many programmers is handling date and time data because the date format in the UI actually does not correspond with the date format in the JavaScript code and this does not also correspond with the date time format in the database. So how do you actually um, be able to coordinate between date format from the UI to, to your code, to the, uh, to the controller and service and then down to the database. So this is what I'm going to be explaining in, in, part, um, in part 43. Then this part 44 is also important. It's called extending JPA repository. Now you want to write a complex query to query. You want to write a query to query data from the database. Normally we write SQL query in the database as a stored procedure or as a view or just as a stored query. But now do you know that we can actually write SQL statements inside our JavaScript class? So in the repository interface, we can actually use the query annotation to write, Java, uh, to write SQL queries 
It could, it could include joins and subqueries, and then we will be able to query and retrieve any kind of data we want. All right, so I'll allow you to read up other ones, but I'd like to mention that we are going to cover Spring Security in a few classes ahead. We're going to talk about role-based authentication as well. Then we are going to be talking about Dockerize Fleet MS version 2. This we did not do in Fleet MS version 1, remember? In version 2, we are going to Dockerize this application and push it to Docker Hub and see how it actually or we kind of split, uh, spin up containers of this application. Now, this four now, we are, going to be doing it, we are going to be doing this four towards the end of these classes, which actually should be in a few weeks or even a couple of weeks. We are going to be deploying to uh, uh, four different platforms and these are need your support. So if you can, if you can support me in some way uh, by buying me a coffee or support me on Patreon or Stripe, uh, this will help me maintain my subscription because I actually maintain subscriptions that sometimes run out and I'm not able to renew it because I actually do these things for free. So if you can support my channel uh, in any way, that will be appreciated. So these are the things we are going to be doing moving forward. So to dive right in, let's now uh, change the background image. And this we are going to be doing following this class. So I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel and also if you have challenges, if you have some other things you want me to add to this list you want us to do, also please leave it in the comment box below and I'm going to also uh, add it to this list as we move ahead.